Nintendo has a lot of IPs, even if it seems like they don't because of all the Mario games. People constantly request new franchises, but what new ideas could they do spinning off or reviving old franchises instead of making new ones to forget? These will all be games that reboot, spin off, or at least take a different direction on the property. So no Golden Sun or Custom Robo here, despite both being in need of returning. Nintendo vs Capcom So this is a bit of a cheat, given that this has been considered an inevitability. Capcom has developed a massive versus series using an engine based off of the Street Fighter engine of the generation. Capcom's best have butted heads with Marvel's favorite mutants like Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Iron Man, met with their XP rivals from SNK, and brought back your parents' favorite Tatsunoko anime characters that you've never heard of. The last is very notable for being ridiculously well received. So well, Capcom localized a game where half the roster are unknowns to most players. On the Wii! Capcom learned one thing. The Versus series has a very welcome home on Nintendo consoles and will print money. If Marvel vs. Capcom 3 had been ported, it might have sold best on the Wii, but that's speculation. The point is I'm sure Capcom is looking to make some money from Nintendo again. Their licensing rights have lapsed with Tatsunoko, and they could renew them and make TVC 2. If the rumor of Ryu being Smash Bros. DLC is true, Capcom has to have something planned for the Wii U. It might just be that at E3, they will announce their next Versus game will be Nintendo vs. Capcom. Either way, it's inevitable this will eventually come one day, and I'm sure it'll be a bestseller. A Yoshi 3D platformer. Yoshi has had many games, but they all have been spin-offs or side-scrollers. If you ask me, it's about time for Yoshi to have a 3D platformer. Let Mario take a break, he needs it. And let Yoshi bring in new tongue-based gameplay and flutter kicks and egg throwing. Just stop and think about all the things Yoshi could do with his tongue. He could swing across gaps, he could hitch a ride, it'd be a chance to do something fresh and progressive. Free to play Ice Climber. Stop, hear me out! Nintendo has a lot of properties from the NES era, most of which with an arcade feel like Balloon Fight or Cuckoo Land. This is exactly what free to play games should be like. A well implemented potential live system is basically you feeling around for a spare quarter in your pocket from your lunch money change. Or you can break a dollar for more quarters if you don't want to wait till tomorrow to get more change back. Except it's more generous. I'm probably eventually going to break down the free to play model and try to figure out where developers have made it work and where they go wrong. A free-to-play sense of gaming, basically. Anyway, Ice Climber would be perfect for this model, and I'd welcome the return. I'd hope the, quote, paywall would be extra content like skins or characters. While you play, you will encounter eggplant tokens, and you can pick them up and then exchange them for alternate skins, characters, and so on. Suppose you save tokens up for a week and then cash in and buy the Balloon Fighter with some new mechanics. Then you might bring in Mario or Wario, or buy an enemy reskin, and periodically new skin and characters are added. So you basically get an expanded sequel to one of these classic games that really couldn't justify a full retail price. And you can spend money to buy all the extra stuff if you are impatient, and look at the game as a challenge to unlock everything instead of a fun, free diversion. Wario Land Mining Diamond City, or Wario Ware Land. I don't have faith we'll get a new Wario Land, especially a good one. WarioWare is too successful. So what if the two Wario properties crossed over? It could introduce WarioWare fans to the Wario Land gameplay by including faces from both properties as Wario looks for treasure in Diamond City. Worst case scenario, Captain Syrup starts making micro games. Bowser's Royal Rampage, or Bowser's Power Trip. It's a good time to be a Mario character. You may just get your own spin-off franchise like Yoshi and Luigi, and even grow your franchise so large you get a spin-off like Wario. Even Princess Peach and Toad have had their own games. 
The only mainstays left are Waluigi, Bowser, and if you insist, Daisy and Rosalina. Why hasn't Bowser gotten his own game? Sure he may get his name in the title and be a protagonist, but it is never his game. I imagine Bowser would be perfect for a 3D Rampage style game. And to clarify, Rampage as in wild, not as in cloning Rampage and having Bowser climb and destroy buildings. Give us a game where nearly everything in the environment can be destroyed by ramming or even breathing fire. Let it be a rompy celebration of destruction. Maybe Bowser's castle is seized by some new threat. Or maybe it was Wario. And he has to put his fighting shell on and kick some ass to prove he isn't the butt monkey he's become recently. Bowser needs some villain cred, and let's be honest, villains are kind of cool. I'm tired of Mario. I'm ready to get revenge. On everything. On that tree. On that castle. I don't care exactly how the gameplay would go. I'd be fine with Bowser learning moves and having to use them in different places. Maybe even a fully 3D Metroidvania style. Don't cross Bowser, or he'll give you shell this winter. Wario and Waluigi Super Stinker Saga The Mario and Luigi series has done well, that kind of gameplay and humor is a hit. At the same time, Waluigi is mostly just Wario's plus one to the parties, and Wario is a humble video game developer nowadays. The two craziest Mario characters are basically in limbo. Wario and Waluigi would make a great pairing for a Mario and Luigi spinoff. Especially if it took more inspiration from the first game and had three attack types and crazy super moves. Both characters could even play slightly different. The two could easily abuse each other to extents Mario and Luigi would never go. Gaiden of Zelda, Ganondorf's War. Villains are fun, they can be badass when they get to be the protagonist. What if there was a threat to Hyrule, and Link didn't appear? What if the evil in Wind Waker's opening wasn't Ganondorf, but Ganondorf was summoned as a last resort to counter it? Maybe it was Majora in that timeline. Maybe the king had already become a villain. In Wind Waker, we learn Ganondorf wants to protect Hyrule. This could add greater meaning to why he wants to see Hyrule survive in return. Maybe Ganondorf needs to collect special equipment to strengthen himself for the fight to come, and upon triumph, the flood begins because he has grown too strong. Ganondorf is such an intimidating foe, it would be so entertaining to play as him and calmly and deliberately destroy entire enemy armies. Duck Hunt Adventures Some classic properties, unlike Ice Climber, however, could manage to evolve into something new and be full retail games. Duck Hunt, following their appearance in Smash Brothers, for example. A dog and a bird. Dog and bird. Remind you of anything? Any holes in your gaming? Duck Hunt could be made into a platforming game and a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. A duo like this could bring back that missing type of gameplay that was lost with Rare. I'm sure Dog and Duck could do plenty as much as Bear and Bird. Perhaps it could also capture some of the fourth wall breaking magic if you, the unseen gunman, again fired from what can only be another dimension. The tone could really almost be a Nintendo version of Rare's tone for Banjo, and kind of what Captain Rainbow tried to be, which is edgy and referential to little scene and periphery characters. You could easily imagine Lana, Prince Tricky, Balloon Fighter, Nana and Popo, Captain Syrup, the Zelda Mailman, Plum, and even Captain Rainbow himself inhabiting the diverse worlds and making quests. Maybe K. Rool could even be a boss. The game would practically make itself, at least in ideas. I could keep listing old characters all day who would fit in, like Stanley, Bubbles, and even Ray MK. About the only characters I don't think could easily fit would be Last Story or Xenoblade characters. Though Seren could be a fun opportunity to get as much overt sexual innuendo and subtle alcohol references as possible. Captain Falcon, Hunter. It's clear Nintendo has forgotten F-Zero. They probably think it has no fans after releasing two spiritual successors to the Super Nintendo F-Zero, both of which are guilty of some pretty bad plot rate. So they released two games, with the less popular gameplay, with few familiar characters, and four storylines that go against the principles built up till then, and think there's no interest in the property. Regardless, this might be the only chance we have to see Captain Falcon and company again. There's plenty to go on. Falcon is a bounty hunter, so you have side quests covered there as well as story bounties. 
Falcon carries a gun and is capable of agilely fighting mano a mano. I imagine the gameplay finding itself as a brawler with light parkour elements and an option to play stealthy. Specifically, the gun could allow a stealthy approach. Kind of like, but better done than Assassin's Creed. More like the last story, which actually has a functioning and mostly operational stealth system. Over the course of the game, Falcon would cross paths with other racers in his quest to stop Black Shadow's Blood Falcon cloning program. And maybe even the Federation's cloning program. It could be a cinematic blockbuster title to make Ubisoft blush in shame. <laughs> Mock Rider Another franchise that could come back and be reborn is Mock Rider, a game about a motorcycle rider who battles invading aliens. Forget the gameplay of Mock Rider for a second, and imagine an HD game based on that premise. A badass motorcycle rider, you never see their face until the credits, and they fight aliens. Did you hear that? That's the game asking to be rebooted as a third-person action shooter with some horror elements. In seriousness, I could totally write a plot for a Mock Rider reboot. A very deep emotional plot that would forever silence anybody who says games are a lesser art. And if for whatever reason Nintendo wanted me to, I'd drop everything to write that plot and work on Mock Rider and it would blow minds. I did probably get the game an M rating, not for graphic violence, necessarily, but for other reasons. But I probably could keep a T if necessary, and I'd probably have it in me to write a sequel too, if it's sold. There would be one potential thing that could totally ruin the game for me if somebody else wrote the plot. If you're familiar with Mock Rider, you may know what I'm talking about, but it's kind of a spoiler. Can you think of any other ideas that could build off of mine? Episode question! What Nintendo IP would you like to see rebooted and totally reimagined? Well guys, remember to share everywhere if you care. Shares and comments help more than you may think. Anyway, if you feel nostalgic or are new, welcome, take a seat and have a scone. You can go back in time to my Xenoblade Cross Hopes, before it's dated since it's still coming for us soon. And let's go with the sins of gaming since I referenced that. And you please use the plate for the scones. You don't know how hard it is to sweep up the crumbs when they get between the bites.